Well, Roxy and Rudy do the deed. They have uh, intimacy in this episode. And just as how episode, I believe, 23 of Mushku Tensei, you know, ended off with Rudy and Eris doing the deed, we now have the ending of season 2 doing pretty much the exact same thing. It's very clear that the director and whoever was working on this episode, they definitely wanted to do a nod to the conclusion of season 1, and the reason for that is because season 1's conclusion was a huge talking point when Rudy, you know, had a very big moment with Eris, which eventually led to her leaving him, and then it led to the whole event setting up the events of season 2, where he went through his ED arc, and then he met Sylphie, eventually had a kid, he married her, and then he went to the desert continent, and then obviously he has kind of found Roxy once again. And so basically, everything about this episode, especially when it comes to this very intimate moment of, like, them being together and sleeping together in this moment, it's definitely just basically reinforcing the conclusion of Season 1, and that what this episode here is trying to do is set up events to come. For whatever's going to happen, it's definitely going to be heavily intertwined with Rudy's character and the decisions he's going to make, good or bad. So legitimately, this is such a fascinating way to almost conclude the series of Season 2, because I believe we only have one more episode left, which is very sad to think about, because next week is going to be the conclusion. But um, yeah, these events definitely get very spicy, and definitely make you wonder what really is going to happen next. Now, I want to talk about obviously one of the big things here, and that is that clearly, you know, Rudy cheated, like, he, he definitely, he cheated on his wife, he cheated on Sylphie, and, you know, he is going to have to bear these consequences, this very moment when he wakes up, he grabs his face, and he realizes what he's done, he realizes it wasn't a dream, it wasn't fake, and all that, he didn't just imagine it, he did sleep with Roxy in this moment, and so, all these, you know, consequences, and things that, you know, he's gonna have to deal with, he's gonna have to face, and depending on how he faces them, depends on what type of person he's going to be in the future, and in this case, he takes the best advice he possibly can, and he just straight up admits that, yeah, he's a cheater, and that he's going to just straight up admit it to his wife, Sylphie, and I think that this is a very fascinating take. It shows that Rudy's not trying to hide from his problems. He's not trying to run away. He's just going to confront them head on, and I think that shows a little bit of maturity, even if what led him here to making these mistakes isn't necessarily, quote-unquote, a good thing. However, there is a lot of nuance, a lot of things that need to be explained when it comes to this episode, that there is some pieces of the episode that isn't properly explained thanks to the anime format. I'll talk about that later on in the video, but for now, let's get into how we got here. So basically, the episode starts off with Rudy reminiscing about his previous life, his parents, how they passed, and, you know, basically, he's grieving. Th this whole segment here is just Rudy's, like, I he realizes how little he cared for his parents, and that it makes him feel incredibly sad and guilty. And then he thinks about Paul's situation, and he admits to himself he never viewed Paul like a father. He never viewed Paul like that. He only viewed him like a very close friend. Even though at this very point into the story, it was very clear that's how Rudy viewed Paul. He viewed him like a close friend instead of a parental figure. He finally admits that to himself, but on top of that, he says that he really was his father. He, he straight up says to himself that Paul was his father, and I think that is very important. It shows that even despite the guilt and sadness that he is facing, he admitted to himself that Paul truly was his parent and he respected him greatly, and I think that's huge. It's a lot of character development, and regardless of wherever it leads him going forward, that is a big detail for his character in terms of progression for him to admit something like that to himself. Because just as how he admitted that Paul was his parent, he also probably basically in turn it's implied that he's admitting Zenith is his mother. So we could kind of assume how he's going to view his mother after all these events that's happened to be able to save her. Now let's get into basically after this little moment. So once we have this little segment with him reminiscing and feeling regrets, and we don't need every little detail to know exactly what he's thinking because it's very apparent he has like, you know, regret. Sadness, depression, anger, frustration, survivor's guilt. He has all of it. And he's wondering, even in this moment, you know, Paul should have shielded someone else. He should have shielded Norn, Aisha. He should have shielded maybe Elena Lees. He should have, you know, shielded anyone that's not him. Anyone in the family. And on top of that, why did he leave behind the family when Rudy could have been gone and everybody potentially would have been fine without him? Which obviously is just a straight-up lie. We know for a fact that Rudy's trying to lie to himself because obviously survivor guilt. But, I mean, Rudy... 
Rudy's trying to negotiate with himself. It's like, if I would have died, you know, nobody would have been as sad as losing Paul. Because obviously, when Rudy gets back to his, you know, hometown, where he lives now, and he talks with Norn and Aisha, they're gonna have to face the fact that their father is gone. And you gotta imagine that Aisha and Norn, there might be a little bit of, like, resentment. There might be maybe some anger towards Rudy, because they don't understand the full picture. They ha were not there. They didn't see it. And regardless if they get the full story or not, there could potentially be some frustration and anger that someone is skilled and excellent as Rudy that is supposed to be this amazing mage and wizard was not able to save someone like Paul, their father. So there, there's a lot of complications that's going to happen thanks to this. And Rudy feels like, you know, if he would have died, there would not have been any sadness, which once again, Sylphie would have been sad. And we know Norn and Aisha would have been sad as well. Paul would have been sad. You know, the, the cast would have been sad. So it's not the fact that, you know, Rudy's right here. It's just he's trying to negotiate with himself with that survivor's guilt that, you know, it should have been him instead of anyone else. So let's get into a little bit of details here. So this episode, just straight up, showcases that a lot of time has passed since the events of the last episode. And what I mean by that is, is that we get up close shots of Rudy when Roxy walks in. And you can see that Rudy has not been, like, taking care of himself. Like, you take a close look at his face, you see it's sunken in, like his cheeks are sunken in. It's clear that he's not sleeping, he's not eating, he's probably not drinking water. He clearly has not bathed because everything about this segment, when they kind of key in on his wound, and stuff that he hasn't properly cleaned himself like you see blood all over his regular attire and even if it is stained you know he could easily have gotten another shirt or something so it's implying that this man is legitimately just straight up not taking care of himself that a uh, passage of time has happened we don't know exactly how long it's very vague obviously and I feel like the episode could have went a long way to establish maybe two three maybe even a week or two have passed since the events of Paul's death I, I feel like that would have done a lot and would have made this episode even better but clearly that was not the case. They more or less went with the visual department of implying that time has passed just because of the way Rudy looks. But with that being said, though, Rudy is not well. And he is in the rut. He doesn't know what to do. He's basically closing himself off. He doesn't really want to communicate with anyone. I mean, we even have later on in the episode when he goes to meet Lilia and he talks with Zenith and all that, that, you know, he hasn't really been helping because he's just been depressed for a while. And it basically implies that, yeah, he's just completely shut himself off, which is very reminiscent to how he was in his previous life, which is what makes this beginning segment of the episode so important is that Rudy was about to get back into his old habits. And, I mean, we even had this mentioning with Roxy. Before the deed happened here and all that, Roxy mentioned that she knew how Rudy was, that Rudy, you know, was someone that wouldn't be able to really just pick himself back up or anything, that uh, Rudy would just sit there, cry, and be alone. Which, as we remember at the beginning of the story, Rudy was a hihikamori. He was a shut-in, he didn't leave the house and all that and the family property. We saw that, even in this new world. But it was thanks to Roxy dragging him out and doing his test, which resulted in him being able to grow as an individual for the first time in like 30, 40 plus years. So the thing is, is that Roxy was very well aware of some of the traits of him as a person. She hasn't forgotten. And so she knew that something needed to be done. She didn't know exactly, but something needed to be done to help him get out of this, or he was going to resort, resort to basically being so closed off that, you know, he was not going to be able to do things. It was only going to lead to a dead end or he potentially died. He might not have ever communicated with Sylphie again, he might not have communicated with his child, nor an Aisha, y you get the point. So, something had to be done, and so even if the episode does not clarify how much time has clearly passed, stuff was going down, and a lot of bad stuff was happening to Rudy, and so something needed to be done. And it, the episode tries to paint that only Roxy came up with the idea, which this is something I guess I want to segue into now, which is very important to give a lot of context to why Roxy did the thing she did within this episode of Mushoku Tensei. So Roxy, it's very clear she came into this episode very, very forward. She was very forward with her intentions. She straight up took advantage of Rudy. At least, the way the episode depicts it, that's exactly what happened. And regardless if there's context given, definitely by the way everything does look here, Roxy theoretically did take advantage of Rudy. Rudy was in a very depressed state, he didn't know what to do, he didn't know what to say, and it, once again, just as how the ending of Season 1 ended off where Eris technically took advantage of Rudy because he was drunk, 
In this case, the exact same thing kind of happened once again. Instead of Eris, it was Roxy that took advantage of him. And I'll give some more nuance to this and talk about this in just a second, but basically, the way the episode paints Roxy, it paints her as someone that's basically a homewrecker, someone that just tried to insert herself into Rudy's life, took advantage of him, being already fully aware that Rudy is in a relationship, because later on in the episode, it is confirmed that Roxy was talking to Elena Lise and cued Roxy in that, yeah, you know, uh, Rudy has a wife, he has a child on the way and all that, and so she was aware. So, with her actions in this episode, it does make Roxy look like a straight-up scumbag. That That's exactly what this episode does. And, I mean, this is a good and a bad thing, and I'll explain the, the reasons why in a second, but Roxy doesn't look really good in this episode. She doesn't. She legitimately looks like a very bad individual, and even if obviously Rudy was taken advantage of, and, you know, it wasn't fully his fault, he still did cheat on his wife, and even if, let's say, Sylphie does accept everything, and she's fine, and all that, and there's a brief little spat, the point of the matter is, he still did technically break his promise, whether that he would only be with one person, and all that type of stuff, so, yeah, Rudy did also showcase that he's a little bit of a scumbag in this episode, but one of the big details is, is that he faced it, and he's like, you know what, I'm just gonna say my thoughts, I wanna say it like it is, I wanna say that I love Roxy, I wanna tell, you know, Sylphie that I cheated, all these different type of things, he's not trying to cover it up, he's not trying to hide it, he's just gonna be completely blunt and just say his feelings like it is to people around him, which once again also shows maturity and development that he's been facing. But let's talk about Roxy and what led to these actions. So basically, Roxy in this episode implied that everything she did was with her own motivation, her own motives, nobody else put any thoughts within her head. For instance, everything that happened in this episode was Roxy's intentions, nobody else told her anything. However, this is very different from the light novel, and anyone that has probably browsed maybe forums or conversations today on Mushku Tensei has probably heard something about this to where light novel readers are potentially upset. As someone that has pretty much read almost all the volumes, I only have two more volumes left until I completely finish Mushku Tensei, I will say this. That yes, there is cut content in this episode. Could it have been better? Yes, this episode could. Looking at the previous episode and how it was basically perfection, and even extended stuff that wasn't even there in the original source was amazing. And then coming into this episode, it is a massive whiplash of an adaptation, and it's just like, why couldn't we have the quality of last episode on this episode? And thinking about it, it's very clear the intentions most likely were because of pacing, because obviously there's one episode left, and because of that, they need to end it on a way that is a little bit satisfying, but also setting up for a season three. So they couldn't possibly just do everything within this episode that felt just so disconnected from every other event that's been taking place within this season of Mushiku Tensei. So, I see why some content was cut, even if I feel like it was maybe for the detriment of the story. I do think that it makes sense why they did, because they can't add everything when it comes to adaptations because of pacing, storyboarding, etc. It's just the stuff that kind of happens. But, uh, basically, in the light novel, it wasn't Roxy that came up with the decision. She knew something had to be done, as I've already clarified. She just didn't know what. She was very anxious, shy, and didn't know what to say. And Elena Elise is the one that came up with the idea of Roxy being intimate with Rudy. Yeah, that, that's, that's the crazy part. So everything that happened in this episode, in the original source, Elena Lise, Sylphie's grandmother, said to sleep with Rudy. So yeah, I, that's all I'm gonna say. Now, with that context being given, and obviously this episode trying to paint a completely different narrative, it does change the dynamic a lot. Roxy was a very impressionable individual, she didn't know what to do, she just knew Roxy, or Rudy needed help, and so she just wanted help, so putting aside her feelings and embarrassment, she decided to make herself look like a scumbag, make herself look like an absolute homewrecker, just to be able to help out Rudy, even if Rudy theoretically began to hate her, or despise her, because obviously she took advantage of him, and she even wanted to imply that in this episode, that she did take advantage of him, she wanted to help him out in any way she possibly could, and it was the only option she felt that was available to her in this moment. So that's exactly what happened. So even if it led to Roxy's benefit and maybe Rudy's benefit, her main intention and goal was to help out Rudy, even if it meant that his anger and frustration would not be no longer on Paul's death and himself, but on Roxy herself. So Roxy was being more or less a martyr in this episode to help Rudy out. That's how you can view the situation, even without the context of Elena Lise. But Elena Lise is the one that implanted the thoughts within her head. On top of that, there was Elena Lise's backstory, a little bit details on her history, and kind of what led 
led to the conversation with Zenith being basically hopeless with her magical impairment, that there's pretty much, like, nothing they really can do. And Elaine at least is the one that clarifies a little bit about that. I'm not going to talk too deep about that one in case the next episode dives into that content. But yeah, there is definitely some stuff that is cut out within this episode, which gets into the whole time lapse stuff I talked at the beginning of this video. Is that uh, there's clearly a passage of time that's happened. It just, once again, it would have been a long in good detail, it would have went a long way if the episode would have said, like, two, maybe a, a week has passed since the events of Paul's death, but it didn't do that. Hopefully, the BDs kind of correct that problem, but, uh, yeah, anyways, Roxy and Rudy got it on, and, uh, they went to Pound Town, so to speak, and jokes aside, this is definitely gonna lead to a lot of complications going forward, because clearly, now that this has happened, I mean, Rudy and Roxy have to live with this detail, and even if, you know, he does marry her, it's going to change up the entire family dynamic. For instance, even if Sylphie welcomes Roxy with open arms and everything is fine, the dynamic of the living situation is going to be very different, because obviously Norn and Aisha is also there, but on top of that, you know, with the events of Paul's death, Norn and Aisha might have some resentment for Rudy even thinking about getting someone after everything happened, but it doesn't just stop there. Roxy's always going to have to deal with that she's the second place wife, because obviously Sylphie was there first and Sylphie is pregnant so Roxy's gonna be very self-conscious about the fact that she's basically a homewrecker and she potentially ruined the family dynamic and caused a lot of trouble so even if the, let's say it's not entirely her fault when arguments happen Roxy might feel guilty or feel to blame if something happens with the dynamic between Rudy and Sylphie so it's very interesting. I, I I love the complicated nature of what happened within this episode. Even if people might be quick to write it off and say this is bad writing, it legitimately is fascinating and good writing. And I can't wait to see how the anime adapts the content going forward. But uh, nonetheless, the episode basically is about that. It's just pretty much about that, where Rudy that makes the decision the that he's going to try to marry Roxy, and he just needs to get Sylphie's blessing. And that's where we're left on with this episode. And so next week is the finale. We got to see how Sylphie's going to react, how the family's going to react. It's going to be fascinating to kind of see how everything is done. But I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my content and you want more of my content to appear in the subscription feed, do subscribe, hit that bell icon, leave a like on the video, leave a comment as well if you enjoyed the episode. And with that, Chibi out.